All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeline or CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to, uh, to welcome Mark J. Carter, who is in Chicago, Illinois. How are you doing, Mark? So far, so great. It's a good day here. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Um, well, you're doing a lot better than, unfortunately, our fo poor folks on the the southeast yes. who are having all the hurricanes. Um, and and Mark has been uh, successfully interviewing people for 25 years, posting interviews online for 12 of those. He collaborated with Ted's founder, Richard Saul Werman, to create a world class conference and help with branding of the world's largest chapter of Meeting Professions International. He's launched book tours, events for New York Times best selling business authors. And you still enjoy interviewing people and post many interviews on your station on YouTube and on markjcartertv.com. All those links will be below. Uh, his Idea Climbing podcast and Idea uh, Climbing, Idea Climbing Internet show. And what we're going to talk about today is relationship marketing and obviously podcasting is a is a part of that uh, strategy so first of all um, mark just for the audience just define relationship marketing because i think people are sometimes overwhelmed they get all of these you know blank marketing blank marketing blank marketing and they're like wow what is that what what it is i think that some people don't want to hear but what it comes down to is really building relationships not using the term relationship meaning oh you you accepted my my connection request on linkedin boom i'm going to hit you up with a sales pitch but actually getting to know someone what are they about what's their business about how can you help them in serving first and then if you're solving problems for people that's what i'm really big on if mm -hmm. they have a problem they want to make go away that you can solve once they get to know you they're much more likely to buy from you. So I think while well, it takes a little bit longer, it's definitely the way to go as opposed to the quick sales that so many people are looking at now with all the automated bots on LinkedIn and things like that. It's really building that relationship of no like, and trust. Yeah, no, I agree with that. It's a pet peeve of mine is the uh, is the LinkedIn outreach that you get that's all personalized. And hey, John, I see you there, blah, blah, I'd love to have you in my network. And the minute you hit accept or connect or whatever it is, you get pinged with this automated email that's a sales pitch. And you're just like, why did you bother? Exactly. That, that is extremely annoying. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, and it's a good point that you made there, because let's face it, like relation, in, in relationship in itself, regardless of marketing or the every relationships take time to build. So they're not something that happened in, instantaneously. So what are what are some of the what are some of the steps you you need to take in order to really build good relationship, real good through marketing? I think one of the ones on the earlier or even the first time conversation is find out who the other person needs to know or what they want to have, what they're looking for. What are their goals? Sometimes, you know, don't get me wrong. Sometimes it can line up. Oh, I do. Mm -hmm. I do video interviews for marketing. Oh, I'm looking for videos for my website. That can right. happen. But finding out what do they need and even ask them, you know, when you go to networking events like the one we met, we met at virtual or in person, mm -hmm. why were you at that event? Who were you hoping to meet? I think questions like that put it the ball in their court. And it helps you that even if it's not you, it gives you a chance to say, oh, I know John, he can help you with that. Or maybe I can introduce you to my friend Sally or something like that, where you're making it about them to get to know them and what kind of wants and needs that they have and making introductions for them before you ever talk about yourself. No, I, absolutely. And I, and I think that's... Uh... That's such a good way to put it. It's 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 around you know being curious about them, asking questions, trying to understand what they're doing. And let's face it, as as humans, like we respect that. That's that's validating. That's 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 showing that you actually you know want to understand what I'm about rather than thinking about how how I can pitch you. Uh, and so uh, and, and so, what are some of the ways you can build those relationships? What are some of the different you know tactics or tools that you can use? When you check in about them and you say, hey, we haven't spoken about for about a month. Last time you mentioned you were looking for X, Y, and Z. And then I'd love to hear where you are today or where that project you mentioned is coming along or the new business venture, wherever it might be. Say that in the email, LinkedIn message, however you're communicating, and then God forbid, do it. I have, there's mm -hmm. so many of them say, oh, I want to hear about your business. And the first thing that, oh, I have a new service. You want to buy it? It's like, that's mm -hmm. not what you said in the email. 
Mm -hmm. So making it about them and following up, showing them you listen in the first time, even if you don't know anyone, you don't always come up with a connection that you can make for them. But you can't say, you know, last time you were talking about writing a book and you needed a publisher, are you still working on that book? Or where does that project stand? And make the connection initially and the reconnection about them first. Because the people that are good at networking and relationships, they're naturally going to reciprocate. They're going to ask you, what are you looking for? Mm -hmm. What projects are you working on? And that's why I always tell people, phrase what you do as a solution to a problem. If you know someone facing this problem, here's how I can help them. Because like I said, it's that pain. If people are in pain, they'll pay to make it go away if you can solve it. But just mm -hmm. mention it. And then if they lean in, a sales conversation can happen. But it's not awkward because they said, tell me more about that. Or I think mm -hmm. I might need that. That takes the awkward, oh, God, here comes the pitch. Or when they, you go into a Zoom meeting and the first, and it, one of the first things they do let me let me share my screen and they open up a 15 slide powerpoint presentation it's like i didn't even say i needed this now we have to go through an entire presentation come on so it's really making it all about them in the conversations at least at first about them yeah yeah and those are really awkward those situations um you know for the for the buyer the person on the receiving end it's really awkward because then you have to say oh, you know, the, can you skip ahead from, you know, can you skip through those slides, please? That's not interesting to us. Yeah. And it just, it just, uh, just ends up being a very awkward experience for both parties uh, concerned. But as you said, it's a, it's a simple thing really at the end of the day is to ask yourself, you know, um, what would I want? What would I want in a situation like this? Exactly. That's a great way to put it is what would I want? And, you know, treat, treat others as you like to be treated as far back as that goes. <laughs> it still yeah. holds true today. <laughs> Absolutely. And talk to me about, there's a lot of, obviously we're on a podcast right now, or we've been on your podcast and, uh, and uh, podcasting is becoming very popular, but I feel in some ways it's like people are jumping into podcasting without really understanding how it works or the significance of it or how it fits into a good relationship marketing plan. Well, I think podcasting, at least in my world and the people that I learned from my interview podcasters before I got started and podcasting, I think is a phenomenal networking tool. And if you're a naturally curious person, it lets you get to meet people that you would never meet if you're, again, naturally and genuinely curious about the other person. You, can, If you're a lifelong learner, learner, you can learn about so many people, so many things, a podcast about sales, marketing, branding, networking, whatever it might be. You get to meet these people, learn from them. But then I think where it reciprocates is now you're sharing them with your audience. So mm -hmm. I think above and beyond all, networking is a phenomenal, I mean, podcasting is a phenomenal networking tool to meet people that you can't just call them up. Can I pick your brain? But Hey, I'd love to talk to you about sales. You, you know, that's your thing. You're really good at it. I'd love to share your thoughts and advice with my audience. I've met some amazing people and sometimes I do business with them and vice versa that I never would have met if it wasn't for an introduction. Hey, do you want to be a guest on this podcast? So I think that's what a lot of people miss. They think of, Oh, you know, let's just go right for how many downloads and sponsorship, because if you're curious and you're learning, and you're networking, that's a long term play because it's relationship based. Some people, it's something like 70 or 80 percent of the podcasts globally don't go past episode 10 because people oh, I'm, I'm not getting a whole ton of downloads. Like, yeah. well, no, it takes some time to build an audience. But as you're building it, you're meeting people along the way and you're starting and building relationships as you grow your podcast. Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, it does. Uh, I, you know, I have a lot of people who reach out. You, you obviously do as well. I have a lot of people who often reach out and ask about podcasting and ask about what they should do. And my advice is all we have a white paper, by the way, uh, which shares our experiences that uh, anybody can download. But my first advice to them is exactly what you said is like, you know, for your first 10, 20, 30, could be 50 podcasts. Don't look at the numbers, look at the quality, look at what you're doing, look at the type of guests. Did you bring value to them? Were they happy about it? You know, what was, uh, what could you extract? You know, did you take that content, turn it into a blog post? Did you turn it into something else? You know, there's lots of different ways to measure the value. But as you said, if you get sidetracked into this world of like, oh, you know, I only got 10 views on that, you know, going, yeah, nobody knows who you are yet. Come on. Exactly. It takes time and it's got to be something you're willing to invest your time in doing. Yeah, absolutely. And and then and I think the other thing as well is a lot of people dive into podcasting without 
really having a plan or, or number or even the type of people they want to talk to, why they want to talk to them, what they're going to do with the with the content afterwards. I, I just feel like we're in that thing now because I'm I'm constantly being contacted with people saying I'm about to start a podcast, I'm starting a podcast. So it's a kind of a it's become a thing, if you like. Um, but as I said, it's if you're going to do it, you have to really think about it first. And you have to ask yourself, what kind of podcast do you want to do? Well, you have to know that. I mean, you touched on it. You have to know why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will say business development, but it shouldn't be a bait and switch yeah. where I'm going to invite potential clients. I don't care about the podcast. I just want to get them on Zoom or get them on Restream, whatever it might be. And I'm going to pitch them as soon as I stop recording. It could, should be, who do you deal with? And I deal with a lot of thought leaders and entrepreneurs in the B2B service space. I have guests who, God forbid, are offering advice to thought leaders and entrepreneurs in the B2B service space. So without being salesy, I am attracting the right target audience, and that's intentional. The hook is I'm not pitching them anything. I'm just sharing some genius. And what I found with podcasting is some people think, well, what does good does it do me if I have those as guests? The only constant in your podcast is you. You yeah. become the thought leader expert, the B2B service and the expert. The guests change, but you're the constant. Like you said, 10, 20, 50, 100 episodes in, your brand is ultimately the one that gets built. Why not build a brand where you're sharing some genius with your target audience and helping them learn from you and learn from your guests? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I mean, and that's been my experience, uh, you know, 1600 in or something at this stage is, is that you can't, you can't put a you can't put a price on all the wisdom that's been shared uh, with me over the years. That's why I mean, I always, I, I never say like, oh, I'm, I'm a thought leader, I'm a guru, I'm a this or I'm a that I'm thinking, I'm a seeker of wisdom. And I'm just a conduit then to bring that, you know, share that wisdom with the world by talking to smart people like yourself. Well, that's what it is. And it's just, it's being able to share something with your audience besides look at me, do you need anything? Or the going old school with like real estate, the drip mail postcards that you get once every three months, do you mm -hmm. want to buy, do you want to buy, do you want to buy? You get to stay in front of them with something besides, look what I'm doing. You want to buy from me? You get to stay in front of them with, look, I just interviewed John. I think you'd love to hear about how to start and market a business podcast. And you get in front of them and you stay in front of them, especially if you can get up to a, every other week or a weekly cadence. Mm -hmm. You're staying in front of people, reminding them about you by saying, here, I love to share what you said, some wisdom with you, not just, oh, you don't want to buy it. I'll check back in a month. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And I, and I think also is that uh, if you put the effort in, then, you know, as you said, if you interview and you uh, people, is that you put the effort in to promote them, to make sure you promote them everywhere you can, promote that podcast, showcase them, sort of take a backseat to it and really say, look, I'm working hard on your behalf. People appreciate that. And with the, with the law of reciprocity, it'll come back to you. Oh, it always comes back when you're giving and giving and giving to people. Maybe they don't give on the first or second mm -hmm. call or the first or second interaction. If it's just them viewing your podcast on YouTube or downloading it from one of the the uh, audio stations, but it will end up coming back because people will start to realize and they're going to want to talk to you because they know you're talking about them. You genuinely care about them and you want to help them. They know you're not going to hit a switch and start to pitch them right away. And again, it does take time because people are very leery because of what you said. It's that I'm going to accept this connection request. Oh, is it what's coming next? And they realize, whoa, he asked about me. Then yeah. The second time, whoa, he asked about me. But the third time it becomes, well, what can I do? The natural, the people who are good networkers, I should say, will naturally start to reciprocate. Why? Because you didn't pitch them on the first or second call. Yeah, no, I, I'm absolutely. And and the other part too is, uh, you know, in that relationship is if they, uh, if they publish stuff on LinkedIn or whatever it is, is to, to go there, read and understand what they posted, and then you know, make a, an educated comment, either add to it or highlight something or whatever. But show, put in the work and read the, read what they've posted or review what they've posted. Don't do the hey, great post, Mark, love the post, oh, fantastic post, because I always say, yeah, okay, you didn't read it. No, nope, not at all. <laughs> Or you didn't, you obviously didn't watch the video. Even if you watch, you know, three or four minutes, you can make what you're saying. You can make a comment with, oh, I love what John said about this. It at least shows that you at least took the time to listen to part of the episode. If it's a podcast or posting, or if it's a longer, if it's a long article is the wrong word, a longer post. Mm -hmm. 
pick one or two things to mention. And it's exactly what you said. It's like, whoa, they took the time. They're much more likely if they need your help or they haven't talked to you in a month or two to reach back out because they realize, wow, he, he actually took the time to look at my content and made it, you know, a really nice comment about it that addressed at least one of the details in the post. Yeah, I mean, because getting back to what we started out talking about, I mean, that's the essence of relationship. I mean, can imagine if you, uh, if you, if you, we're we're friends, and you send me say, hey, look, I I just I I wrote I'm writing this book, you know, and send it over. You know, would you read a few chapters? And and I you send it over to me, and then I just say, yeah, it's great, Mark. Okay. <laughs> How would you feel? You'd say, oh, John's not really much of a friend of mine because he really hasn't even given it a cursory look. Yeah, you definitely want to let them know that you are truly engaging with them, not just saying, oh, that's great again. Yeah, exactly. And then the other thing, just going back to podcasting, I think another trap that people fall into uh, when they start a podcast is trying to uh, create and adopt a persona, right? Rather than just being who you are. Because at the end of the day, if you're going to do this on an ongoing basis, creating a persona and trying to be something that you're not is going to, is eventually but it, it, well, it's going to be transparent it's going to be you know people are going to see through it but also it's going to be a hard thing to maintain and that's why i would say to people as well as like just be who you are if you're a serious analytical person then just be a serious analytical person on your podcast because that's who you are if you're if you're you know funny and whatever then be funny but don't but if you're a serious analytical person don't try and be something else like don't try to be the funny person and if you're really like funny and you're very superficial don't try to be the serious expert no i mean if you're outgoing and gregarious naturally do that because i think with along the lines of what you said the first people tuning in are probably going to be people that know you on some level yes and they're going to be checking you out and if you're this over the top and trying to be funny and you're talking too fast they're going to be like what the heck is this on the <laughs> other side if you pull back rein it in and you mm -hmm. talk like this in a slower pace than you normally talk they're going to pick up on that too it's people that listen to the podcast and say oh mr or miss successful podcaster i'm going to do what he or she's doing be you nailed it be yourself please because faking it's going to get old and you can't fake it all the time it's going to shine through and it's better to let people know the real you and listen because they are more analytical attract right listeners and viewers they are more gregarious now going attract right listeners and viewers and just be yourself it's going to make it a lot more fun in the long run yeah and and a lot and a lot a lot easier to sustain because uh, it's hard to sustain a persona that doesn't really belong to you yeah. um and and so what else mark where, where do you see relationship marketing going i see people realizing that there's not a the, most of the time there's not a quick fix anymore mm -hmm. people are starting a lot of people are talking about the automated bots on linkedin right now and other things like that where I see it going is people realizing I'm going to have a longer sales cycle, but once I build a lot of relationships, or I know one thing I've done is I've recently stopped going to a lot of events, virtual events, and in some in person, but most of it's virtual. And I picked a few to really build a brand and build relationships and show up without pitching, you know, every other week or every week as the case may be and stick with those so i'm not the new person in the room and i think that's where relationship marketing is going is people picking a few groups to go to or a, a group of friends that they communicate with once every few weeks once a month whatever it might be and really building the brand base on i'm a giver i want to help you first i think that's it's going to become more acceptable no you're not going to go to a group and make a sale on the first time you're in the room within a 30 second elevator pitch but once they get to know you it might be the fourth or fifth time they hear it Oh, I do know someone that could help you. But then when you go back to groups like that, your brand is starts to get built and the emotional equity builds up and people want to help you. And it might and they might not have a need for your services or know anyone that needs your services. But two months later, they're overhauling their website and like, oh, I need web design or I need marketing videos or I need whatever it might be. And you're not always the new guy or girl in the room because it happens so rarely. I can just go into a room as the newbie give a 30 second pitch and expect someone to raise their hand and say you're hired but building mm -hmm. the brand and letting people get to know you so they feel like they have the relationship side of relationship marketing i think that's where it's going is it's going to be acceptable longer sales cycles but once they start to know you one person over the course of even if it's six months yeah. once you built your brand they might be able to send you three or four clients 
how long would it take you going to another being the first first timer in the room again and again and again to get four or five clients? That's a pure numbers game that can get exhausting. Yeah. So I think they're going to realize once I build my brand as a giver and I stick with a few groups, you got to try some. You don't just pick three and stick with them for mm -hmm. no reason. Try a bunch of groups, but then whittle it down to two or three and really become the brand of you, which gets into what you said about podcasting. When you're doing your 30 second pitch or you're having a conversation in a breakout room, be yourself. Let people yeah. feel like they're really getting to know you. No, absolutely. And I think that's great advice about not spreading yourself too thin and being and being targeted and building. As you said, I mean, you may have to go to a number at the beginning to find the right ones. But once you find the right one, really invest the time and energy there. Because as you said, I mean, if you can spread yourself thin, that's fine. Um, you might get a, you know, you might score a lucky punch. Who knows? But the chances are that if you focus and you focus in on particular areas and really build it, you're going to have a much better chance of success. Because like you said, I mean, relationships don't spring up overnight. So why should you think that you can dive into a group or something and, uh, and suddenly be the bell of the ball, right? Well, and also whenever you can, when, whether it's someone that, groups i'm involved with i run the breakout rooms for them i'm a member of a group mm -hmm. that i found some a lot of times the paid groups are better because people have a vested interest they tend sure. to attend more but it's going back to those groups and saying oh can i help you run breakout rooms or in some way shape or form take leadership roles to make yourself stand out to make your name more well known by helping the group that's another thing that people can do that a lot of these group leaders realize i know a few of them are like they have group leaders, table captains, whatever they might call them, you get a chance to build your brand and be in front of people by helping the people run their events more effectively. So taking a leadership role whenever you can is really highly suggested too. Yeah, listen, that is a fantastic point and I think a great one to end on, but I would un triple underline that one because you're doing a number of things there. You're being of service, you're investing your time and energy in it, but you're also putting yourself in a fantastic position as well for people to get to know you on a on a little bit of a deeper level, the relationship part that we talked about. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So fantastic. Well, like as I said, all of Mark's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. What I do is with sizzle reels, people that need video for marketing. I've been interviewing people forever. They don't want to write, memorize, or cite a script. I bring them into an online state-of-the-art studio interview them, pull out their passion, their purpose, their stories, no scripts, because some scripts sound so cold mm -hmm. and so practiced that people tune out after 10 seconds. And in less than an hour, they get five videos for their marketing efforts. And if that's what if you want to see what I do as far as interviews go, markjcartertv.com takes you right to my YouTube station, markjcartertv.com. And then everything else, social media profiles, my website is linked right there. Perfect. And like I said, all those will be below this video. So listen, thanks again, Mark. Thank you for watching, listening. See you all again soon. Thank you.